ഹലോ എവരിവൺ വെൽക്കം ടു എ ഡേ ഇൻ ഫിഫ്റ്റി മിനിറ്റ്സ് യു പി എസ് സി പ്രിലിംസ് ഡെയിലി കറണ്ട് അഫയേഴ്സ് ബൈ നിയോ ഐ എ എസ് ടോപ്പിക്സ് ഓഫ് ദ ഡേ ആർ സിംപ്ലിഫൈഡ് ജി എസ് ടി റിട്ടേൺ എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ ക്വാളിറ്റി അപ്ഗ്രഡേഷൻ ആൻഡ് ഇൻക്ലൂഷൻ പ്രോഗ്രാം ടിസ്റ്റീൻ റെവല്യൂഷൻ ന്യൂ ടേൺ ഓവർ ത്രഷോൾ ഫോർ ഓഡിറ്റ് ഇൻ എം എസ് എം ഇ മാൾട്ട അഭിയാൻ ബ്രെക്സിറ്റ് അഗ്രോ കെമിക്കൽ സ്പ്രേയിങ് ത്രൂ ഡ്രോൺസ് ഇല്ലീഗൽ വേൾഡ് വെറ്റ്ലാൻഡ്സ് ഡേ first of all we can study about simplified gst return simplified gst return will be implemented from 1st april 2020 it will make return filing simple with features like sms based filing for nil return return pre filing improved input tax credit flow several measures has been taken to improve compliance aadhar based verification of taxpayers is being introduced The union budget has proposed a dynamic QR code for consumers invoice. Invoice and input tax credit matching is being done wherein returns having mismatch of more than 10% or above a threshold are identified. Wherein critical information shall be captured electronically in a centralized system. Okay, we can move to the next topic that is education quality upgradation and inclusion program. Equip. it has been put forward by department of higher education mhrd it will deliver further on principles of access inclusion quality excellence and enhancing employability in higher education an initial budgetary provision of rupees 1413 crore has been kept further budgetary provision shall be made after appraisal and approval of the scheme budget also introduced a degree level online education program through this initiative gross enrollment ratio will be increased and education will be accessible to all the sections of the society according to economic survey 2019 20 the expenditure in education sector as a percentage of gdp increased from 2.8% in 2014 15 to 3.1% in 2019 20 we are moving to a next topic that is tishreen revolution 2019 iraqi protests that has been named that have been named as tishreen revolution or october revolution it was started in october 2019 in the social media by civil activist it then spread to the northern and southern province of the country the protests were against the 16 years of corruption in the country it also aimed to stop the iranian intervention in iraq we are moving to our next topic that is new turnover threshold for audit in msmes small retailers traders shopkeepers who comprise msme sector currently for them the turnover of more than rupees 1 crore are required to get their books of accounts audited by an accountant and this threshold for audit has been raised from 1 crore to 5 crore the increase limit than 5 crore shall apply only to those business which carry out less than 5 percentage of their business transaction in cash okay we can also uh, learn about employee stock option plan okay we can study what is employee stock option plan it is an employee benefit scheme under which the company encourages its employees to acquire ownership in the form of shares these shares are allotted to employees at a rate considerably lesser than prevailing market rate it is believed that employees who are also the shareholders will focus better on company's performance and growth so that the value of their share appreciates during the formative years startups generally use ease of plan to attract and retain highly trained and talented employees currently ease of are taxable as at the time of their exercise and recently budget has proposed to ease the burden of taxation on employees by deferring the tax payment on esops by 5 years or till they leave the company or when they sell their shares whichever is earlier okay we can move to our next topic that is malta abhiyan indian navy conducted a coastal security exercise called malta abhiyan in sundarbans this exercise was conducted to create awareness about the coastal security to local community two naval boats were flagged off sundarbans till hemnagar 
along the international trade protocol route between India and Bangladesh. Okay, we are moving to a next topic that is Brexit. Britain has officially left European Union and has become the first country to leave 28 member bloc. A key part of the withdrawal agreement was there would be a transition period until the end of 2020. The transition arrangement is designed to make the separation process smoother. During the transition, UK will be officially out of European Union and not represented on European Union bodies. But it would still have same obligation as an European Union member that is remaining in European Union custom union and single market. Okay can move to the next topic that is agrochemical spraying through drones illegal. Recently, Union government has clarified that drone spraying is illegal as per Insecticide Act 1968. This clarification has come after environmentalists highlighted that the usage of drones for agro agrochemical spraying has increased and has a potential to create problem. Insecticide Act 1968 does not allow aerial spray. As per its provisions, aerial application of pesticides need approval and permission of central insecticides board. Everyone of you are aware of endosulfan incident in Kasargod. Kasargod in Kerala faced the negative consequence of aerial spraying of endosulfan for over 25 years. It affected many people, especially children with mental and physical disorders. And the health effects of endosulfan include neurotoxicity, late sexual maturity, physical deformities, etc. In 2019, Supreme Court banned the production and distribution of endosulfan. And we can uh, st also study about Central Insecticide Board. It was established under Insecticide Act 1968. And it is under the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. It advises the central government and state government on technical matters arising out of administration of this act. It advised the central government and say state government on the risk to human beings or animals involved in the use of insecticides and pesticides. It also advised the central government and state, state government on the manufacture, sale, storage, transport, distribution of these insecticides and pesticides. Okay, we can move to our next topic that is World Wetlands Day. It is celebrated every year on 2nd of February. This day marks the date of adoption of Convention on Wetlands. Theme for 2020 is Wetland and Biodiversity. So, you are all aware of wetlands. Wetlands includes marshes, mangroves, rivers, lakes, deltas, floodplains, coral reefs, marine areas no deeper than 6 meters at low tide as well as human, human made wetlands. Wetlands are very much critical part of our natural environment. They mitigate floods, protect coastlines, build community resilience to disasters, reduce the impact of floods, absorb pollutants and improve water quality. According to UNESCO, the threat to wetland will have an adverse impact on 40% of world's flora and fauna that live or breed in wetlands as per IPBES that is Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services. Wetlands are the most threatened ecosystem. We can study about IPBES that is Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services. It is an intergovernmental organization. It is established to improve the interface between science and policy on issues of biodiversity and ecosystem services. It is headquarters in Bonn, Germany. That's all for today. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Follow our website neoiascap.com for detailed content and monthly prelims digest. Also join our current affairs exclusive test series through the website. And finally, participate in the daily current affairs prelims infotainment quiz at our telegram channel neoiasprelims at 9.30pm every day. Thank you.